Okay, again, this is uh, this video is part of a series. There should be an annotation on the screen that will bring you to the playlist for this uh, series. Go ahead and check out the previous videos if you have not already. Uh, and this series, we are working on uh, Python 3. Uh, I am creating this series once again uh, in 2013. If you're watching this in 2013, the playlist may not be complete because I'm putting up a new video every Wednesday. If you're watching this in the future, that's not an issue, but just realize that if uh, you're watching the series and it seems to kind of end uh, randomly, it may be because you, you need to wait until next Wednesday for a new video. Anyway, last time uh, we created a text file through our Python interpreter. In fact, let me get out of the Python interpreter here clear the screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cat out, which uh, will display out. This is this cat part is not part of Python. This is just part of uh, my shell. Um, and I'm going to cat out. Uh, and again, if you're on Windows, it would be type. You type type in the name of the file or just open it in Notepad or whatever. But here is the file that we created. It's It's got a couple of lines. It's got six lines. Uh, and this is what it looks like. So last time we created that, today we're going to read that within Python. So let's go back into Python 3. And just like last time, we're going to create a file object. We're going to call it f. We're going to say open. Oops. And then we're going to give it the name of the file, file.txt. And last time we used either w for write or a for append. Uh, today we're going to use r for read. So our Python interpreter has now opened up that text file and put the, the information from it into our object f. So now if we just wanted to read the whole file, what you can see is we can say f.read and then parentheses with nothing inside the parentheses. If we hit enter, you can see it displays the whole file, but it displays it all on one line. Uh, with new line characters for the new lines rather than actual new lines. And that's because it's just outputting it as a plain string. Uh, and so it's basically not showing us those special characters, it's giving us the backslash n for new line. So how do we um, read the file and have it display it as it should be displayed with multiple lines? Well, um, what I'm going to do here, and I'll explain more of why I'm closing the file and reopening it uh, in a few minutes. But let's, I'm uh, hitting up arrow just to go back. So I closed the file out. I'm reopening it. And now, what I'm going to do is instead of just typing read, uh, uh, sorry, f dot read and parentheses, I'm going to take that string and put it into a variable. We'll say x. So we'll say x equals f read. So we didn't get anything on the screen, but now we have a variable called x. And we can print that, as we have in previous tutorials. And I'll hit enter, and it displays it as it should look. Uh, this new line character isn't a new line character. That's something we put into the file, if you remember from the last week's tutorial. Um, so that is how you just read the file. Now we're going to take that uh, one step further. I, if I try to read the file again, so if I do uh, f.read, and the parentheses, just like we did up here, you would think, hey, it's going to display this. But if I hit enter, it doesn't. It gives us an empty string. It gives us those uh, two single quotes with nothing in between them. Why is that? Because we've already reached the end of the file. When you open the file, you start at the first character and you work your way through as you read it. We've read the whole file, so we're at the end. That's why I F uh, file closed. I closed the file earlier. But you don't have to close the file. I was just doing that so I didn't get ahead of myself. So I'll hit up arrow a few times, and we will reopen that file into our F object. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to hit Control L to clear the screen real quick. So we've opened our object. And another way you can use the read function is, I'll give you an example, F read, and I can say, one. And what this is going to do is, from wherever I'm at in the file, it's going to read one character. So in our file, the first character, the first line, I'll scroll back up even though I cleared the screen, the first line is, this is line one. So the first character at the beginning of the file is a T. 
there we go. So we read one character. But if I was to read one more f character, it's not going to read T again. It's going to read H and I and S. And we're going through the file. We don't have to read just one character. We can read multiple characters. So I can say read 10 characters from where I'm at. So the next character is actually the space because we have this is line 1. So now we have the next 10 characters. If I was to continue to read 10 more characters, we're going to get the new line character and this line and it ends there because that's 10 characters. And of course you can put in whatever number you want to read that far ahead, but it always reads from where you're at in the file. So how do you get to a certain part of the file? Let's say we want to go back to the first character. Well, we can use our F object and we can say F and use the function of seek. So F seek and we give it the number of the character we want to go to. And if you do zero, it brings you back to the first character. So now if I read 10 characters, it says this is line. And if I do 10 more characters, it, it finishes off the word line and one because we started back at the beginning of the file at zero. And we can do that again. We can go back to zero by saying seek zero. So now if I was to read one character, it would be the T again and then the H and then the I and I can seek back to zero again and now I can read um, now we know that T H I S so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to now say seek instead of zero I'm gonna say seek and four which would bring us to the fourth character and I can read one character there which would be the space because <laughs> well because we already we have the T the H, the I, and the S. So now, zero brings us to before the first character. So when I put in four, it doesn't bring us to the S, which is the fourth character. It, we, it brings us, it's completed four characters. If you've done programming before, you know you start counting at zero. In real life, you start counting from zero. We just don't think about it like a clock. You know, you don't start at one o'clock. You start at 12 o'clock, and really 12 is zero. It should be zero, zero hours and zero, zero minutes at the beginning of the day. And it's just we don't think about it like that, although we do it all the time. When you start counting, I have no money, you know? So when you have a penny, you didn't start at the one cent. You've earned one cent. You don't start at one dollar. You work up to one dollar. So I hope that helps make it a little more sense in your head. So when I say seek four, we aren't going to the S. We're going past the S to the space. And if I read one more, now we get the I, S, four is, because this is. And of course, we can read multiple. If I do one more, that's a space. And I can say, so I can say five here, and we get the word line in the space. Okay, so let me seek back to zero. So right now we're at the beginning of the file. And of course I can do read uh, f dot read, which reads the whole file, which means I have nothing left to read unless I go back to the beginning again. And now I go back to the beginning and I can read it again. Because if I try to read it now, I get nothing because I'm at the end of the file. So control L clears the screen, at least on a, a, a Linux machine. I don't think that will work on a Windows. It might work on a Mac. Uh, but that's why I'm hitting to clear the screen there. So let's, let's review real quick. Uh, well, let's, let's F close our file. So we open the file just as we did when we were writing to the file. Sorry, F equals open. And we're going to say the name of our file, which in this case is file.txt. But of course, it's whatever you want to name the file. And then we're going to tell it what we want to do. And so far, we've used W for write, R for read, and A for append. There's actually other ones where you can read and write, whatever. Uh, we're not getting into that, at least not now. But we want to read the file, so we're going to put an R. So the file's open, it's put into the F object, and then we can say uh, file read, which would display the whole f file, but as one line. If I was to do read seek zero, it brings me back to the beginning of the, 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 the file. And if I wanted to display this as it should be, 
uh, displayed or it would be displayed if we were reading the file in a text editor we can put that into a variable again the variable can be whatever we call it. I can call it file equals uh, whatever the the contents of the file is and I can say print file and it prints it and I can print file once you've put it into a variable that's what's in the variable the variable is not going to change unless you change it so we don't have to keep seeking back to the beginning if we want to reprint the whole file uh, so I can say print I can say the file uh, contains that ah. new line plus um, file so here we've got the line the the string that we put in here and then there's a new line because we put the new line character and the actual contents of the uh, the file there and um, so you can once again uh, once you put it into a variable it's a string inside that variable so you can print it out with other strings uh, as we have in previous tutorials so this is uh, the, the first look at reading a file there's actually a lot you can do you can read it line by line you can search through it for certain parts you can break up the lines different ways but I wanted to give you the basics and that's what we just did today so as always I thank you for watching please visit my site filmsbychris.com it's Chris with a K there should be a link in the description there you can search through my videos and playlists and also find ways that you can interact with uh, other viewers and myself uh, including like the IRC channel again uh, comments below are great questions in the comment section are not the best place for them I recommend the IRC channel I want to thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day and I also hope that you come back next Wednesday if you're watching these as I'm putting them out for next week's uh, Python 3 tutorial and if you're watching this in the future and the videos are already out there should be an annotation on the screens of the playlist I encourage you to watch them and remember to like and subscribe let me know you like these Python videos uh, so that I know what you guys like uh, the reason I'm making them is because you guys told me you like them but continue to let me know that you like them uh, thank you and I hope that you have a great day